Hey, what is going on guys? So today we're taking a look here at the Master Grade Lunamaria Hawk Custom Gunner Zaku Warrior. So this is a brand new Master Grade and it's a pretty interesting build. I've got a lot of thoughts that I want to share with you guys about the actual building process and how I think that, or I have a theory after building it that I really feel like this is maybe was originally designed to be an RE100 kit and then later on or somewhere along the lines they decided to just make it a full-on master grade. I really get that feeling and I'll explain more about that later on how I feel like this is kind of like equal parts master grade and RE. So we'll talk more about that later but Overall, the construction of the kit is just pretty simple. It really didn't take me very long to put this together at all. It's really comparable to, like, say, the Master Grade Jagan, which came out not too long ago, which was also pretty simple, very straightforward Master Grade. This is very similar to that. But it was a pretty fun, interesting build, just very simple and very quick. It took me just a couple hours to get this built up. But as we get into it, guys, just as always, big thank you to USA Gundam Store for their support. If you want to check out this kit, then check out the link below, down below. There in the video description, there's a link to their site. You can go there and check out this kit and everything else. You can save 10% off everything there on their store using that coupon code there, Zacorelius10. So let's just first off uh, go through the accessories, everything you can get included with the kit, and then we'll talk some more about my thoughts on it. All right, so first off, you got this big old sheet of sticker markings, which I used a couple of them, but you have a ton of them on there, just marking stickers, Zaft logos, and other different Gunner Zaku Warrior logos, as well as some caution markings and striping bits that go around on there. But as you'll see from the ones that I put on here, they don't really look that good on the plastic, especially on the curved surfaces. They aren't going to lay flat and just anything on the red surfaces, you're going to see the outline of the sticker and over here like that on the outside. If it's on white plastic, then it looks fine because you're not really going to see the outline of the sticker all that well. But anything on the darker colors, they're just going to look kind of all right, not really all that great. While we're here though, we did also have one single foil sticker, which was for the mono eye in there. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later. We did also have our little 100 scale pilot figure here, standing Lunamaria Hawk, as well as our action base adapter for that. Then for the hand options for this guy, you're gonna have swappable fingers. So like with a lot of Master Grades these days, you're just gonna swap out the fingers. So we've got a set of closed fists there. And you also have a set of extended fingers for making open hands, a set of holding hands for holding onto the beam axe, and then a set of trigger finger hands for holding onto the guns. And each of the hands you have both left and right sets for those. Then we have the beam assault rifle. Now I gotta say, I do kind of like the changes that they've made to the design of this. They've made it look a little bit more bulky, a little bit more substantial. I've never really too much liked the design of this beam machine gun. It's obviously very stylized to look sort of like the Zaku machine gun as it is supposed to look like the Zaku. Uh, but it wasn't really all that ever appealing to me. But this design, I think it does look pretty good. You have this white part here on the front, no sticker or anything for that camera as I suppose it's supposed to be on there. But you do have a couple other stickers. I just threw one of them on here, but again, Sticker on the dark plastic doesn't look all that great. Anyway, you can hold this in either the left or the right hand. This forward handle does move up and down, so you can pull that out like that. And also, this part here at the top, you can pull that. Well, you don't want to pull it off. You want to pull, and ideally, the whole thing up like that. Let's see. All right, anyway, so once that's up, then you can rotate that. You can bend that off to the side like that, and that's so that you can store this on the back skirt. There's a little peg here on this side for plugging that onto the back skirt. With this uh, ammunition drum there on the top, it wouldn't fit, so you have to move that off to the side, so that works well. Then back around here on his back skirt, you have this panel here in the center that will slide down, exposing the hard point where you can plug in the rifle onto the back here. And with the backpack and everything going on here, it's kind of a squeeze to get it in there amongst everything else, but it does fit in there back on the back skirt. However, you can't say the same here for the Beam Tomahawk, but I do really like the redesign to this Beam Tomahawk. I think it looks really cool, very unique looking. It has, it has like the blade at the back. And of course we have our beam effect parts for this, two of them. So you've got this one little one that sits up here at the top and then the other one will go out the front now. So yeah, this one, this can't be stored anywhere on the kit when not in use. So it's either in the hand or just out somewhere else. So that said, I do really like the look of this. It looks really, really cool. So I think I'll probably keep this in the hand ultimately, but the beam effect parts, also, they're very, very light pink, almost clear, but they could maybe definitely be darkened up a little bit if you want to take some uh, clear pink or something like that to spray that on there. But anyway, the effect of them, they look cool. They're very nice and sharp, and the effect does look nice, so really like this weapon. And that's pretty much it for the accessories. Everything else is just mounted onto here already. So on the side skirts, we have the grenades. You can just pull these off like that. There's two for the left side and two for the right side. You can pull those off, and they're pretty cool. Have you have the white and red separated, but on the back side, you have this peg here and that empty space in there, which is not really looking all that great. So you can't really hold these in the hand. There's nothing really 
mm, that you could do with any of the different hands even like the trigger finger hand is like sort of extended out you could almost sort of hold it in there but it really seems like a misstep that they didn't make a hand option that's able to hold these onto these so if they're not plugged onto the side skirts I mean, it's cool you can take them off and use them you could sort of like make it look like he's throwing it plugging this some way onto an action base but they didn't even give you anything to like plug this onto an action base or anything so it's just kind of like on or off so you can't really do anything with them and of course we have the shield over here on the side i like the new look and the design of the shield here this is on a kind of extending peg here so that extends out away from the body even more so like that and just a ball joint and ball joint at the two ends and just this hinge here in the center on the underside of the shield you have two extra magazines for the rifle those are just dummy magazines you could use them on the rifle i think the connection is the same but they're just kind of just meant to be stored in there anyway so this can be moved around really nice that hinge in there will allow you to bring the shield around to the front of the shoulder like that if you wanted to so pretty cool the you know, utilization of that is nice and then of course the wizard system on the backpack the giant beam cannon and attachment of the tenga over here on the side i really don't know what the designers were thinking about this other versions of this kit the high grade and the 100 skill non-grade and everything it didn't quite look so tenga like it definitely does now but anyway it's pretty nicely detailed just the tank here for this just a few parts uh, like I said like the rest of the kits very simple and then of course you have the giant cannon which is on this arm which will extend out like that you have a hinge here as well so you have two points of rotation and then a hinge which will allow you to rotate that in and out you have this wire with this red mesh covering over over it that looks pretty nice I'm not too uh, displeased with that I think it looks pretty good but yeah with this rifle on the back square that's just kind of getting in the way so I'm just going to take that off for the time being anyway this can rotate out and around can get that out around to the front and then out here at the back I should have folded this out earlier but that folds out the back like that and then out the front this part folds out like that for its full length very long this handle here, the main handle, will fold off to the side, so you're able to hold onto that on the side there. And then it also does have a secondary handle, which you can also use. This also folds out like that. And then the camera on the top here will pull up. So that should just slide up a little bit. There you go, so that's popped up. And then you have a blue sticker there for that. And so I guess now would be a good time to mention uh, the first in my list of reasons why this is more like an RE, or at least just like an RE and less like a master grade and that is the fact that it has uh, very few clear parts the only clear part that it has is for the visor for the actual mono eye piece there's no clear part for that for this big lens which you'd think was should be perfect for a nice clear part there on the camera here for the rifle or for the cannon uh, no clear part for that either it's just a regular piece and you have just a sticker to go over the top of that so the lack of clear lens parts is for this doesn't seem very master grade-esque in my opinion but anyway, the articulation arm for the Canon is very nice, works really well, and so before we move on to trying out some different poses and other things like that, let's just talk about some of the rest of the articulation here for the kit. So we saw that for the Canon and then for the shield, let's go back here to the head. You'll, you can point the head up to about there, which is not a whole lot, but you can get a good upward look there and then down to there, not too bad. The cockpit hatch will open here in the center, very simple, it's just this little door if you can get to it. That will just fold down like that, and our seated pilot figure is up inside there. I should also mention that the head can only rotate to about 45 degrees there. It's getting blocked there in the back, so you can't get a full rotation off to the side with that, but pretty good. As for the Mono Eye, that can also be rotated a little bit here. You've got to pull off the helmet first. And easier said than done because it pulled off the whole head, but once you finally get that off, then here's what it looks like on the inside. You can just turn that piece on the inside there manually to rotate the mono eye off to one side. So even though the Masquerade 2.0 Zaku has the built-in gimmick where when you turn the head the mono eye turns right along with that, you don't have to take anything off or apart to do so. Fortunately, unfortunately they couldn't incorporate that gimmick into this kit as well. As for ab crunch, we do have a little bit. You can bend that forward to there and back to there. Also side to side it does have a little bit, not really a whole lot. You can just sort of, let's see. Here you can sort of get it off to the side a little bit. I was testing this out when it was just the frame, because I was just building up the frame first before I putting the armor on, and then I can notice that it did have a little bit of side to side movement, but we're not really all that much. It does have a little bit of rotation here, just side to side a little bit like that, basically like kind of 45 degrees, not really even all that much, so you can't really rotate it all that much around. I guess if you pop it up off the ball joint a little bit, maybe get a little bit more off to the side. So stomach articulation is not that great. Let's go up to here to the shoulders. 
these will fold out to the front like that. Pretty nice. The uh, joint for the shoulders is very simple. It's not really all that complicated at all. It's, uh, you know, I've, I've seen more complicated shoulder joints on a high grade to be honest. But anyway, it works. It folds out to there. The whole shield armor itself will move up like that. You ultimately can get the arm up to about more than 90 degrees. So that's pretty good. Pretty good upward movement there for the arm. Then just back down here, I want to keep that shield up out of the way for a moment. The arm will work pretty normally, just rotation there at the top. Double joint here for the elbow, and that looks pretty nice. One thing about the frame is that the frame is detailed in any areas where it shows, like here in the exposed joints, uh, or like the inside of the vents and things like that. But anywhere where the frame doesn't show, it's not detailed at all. It's just strictly there for the utility of holding the parts onto the frame. There's no... There's not a bunch of detail on this frame at all. So if you're the kind of person that likes a very detailed inner frame, then yeah, there's there's some on like the joints and stuff, but ultimately not that much. As for the wrist, we have a ball joint connection and then a hinge here at the base of the hand. So that's pretty nice. You have a nice movement there. The thumb is on a ball joint. And as we saw before, the fingers are just swappable. One thing I want to point out here on the arm as well is the seam line. Point number two for why this is, doesn't seem like a brand new master grade is a couple of seam lines that it has on it. So here on the shoulder, this there's a seam line down the middle of these parts. Uh, so I'm sorry, not the shoulder, but the upper arm. A seam line down the middle of these upper arm parts is just a front and back piece that sandwiched together. Very easily, I think, could have been just a single piece that just slides down over the top of that. We've seen that done with other kits before. I think it really could have been done in this case, but it wasn't. As for the forearm, the forearm is four pieces, front and back, and then two side ones that all go together to make it so that there's no seam on the forearm. That's really good how those parts go together. I don't know why they couldn't figure out a different way to make this one go together better without a seam line down the middle of it. Now just real quick then, while we're on the topic, I'll just move down here to the legs, and we have a seam line here on the side of the thighs, up um, below this uh, connector part here. And then on the inside of the lower leg, you can see there's a seam line there between the front and back half of the lower leg armor. There's a little bit of a seam there as well. So not a lot. I mean, the seam lines that it has is just a couple little ones, but they all seem like they could have very well been avoided, especially for if their band I was engineering a brand new master grade. I don't think those really would have been too big of an issue to get rid of. But anyway, back to the articulation of the skirt armor here. Now, this is going to be point number three, why this feels like more like an RE, because the way that the skirt armor is attached is exactly the same like the skirt armor of the Hamahama. Hama. Basically, you have this uh, tubing part that goes around here, and then the skirt armor is attached by two pieces of the front and back half are sandwiched around this part here, the tubing part. So this uh, skirt armor for the Hamahama Hama was exactly the same like that. So I just was putting that together and thought, oh, where have I seen this kind of construction before? So uh, that said, it works fine. I mean, it goes, rotates up like that. The underside is in purple rather than black like the rest of the frame. So again, just seems kind of lazy. Like they just needed the parts here for the vent to be purple, but that could have been a separate part and then still keep the main back of this part here, here in black. I think if they really wanted to, they could have separated that like that. Uh, but otherwise you'll just have to paint that if you really care about the underside of this armor being in black. The side skirts actually, it's a kind of two point of articulation here. It's connected, uh, there's a connector piece between the main plate of armor here and the side skirt. Sorry, but you can move that up out of the way. So getting the skirting armor out of the way for the legs shouldn't be any sort of problem at all. And then while we're here, this uh, hip joint is on a track so you can rotate that forward and back for some nice articulation there at the hip. But then once again, just going back here to the back skirt, the back skirt is the same as the front skirt, just clips onto the tubing around there so you can just move those up and down separately on their own. Also on this vent part up here on the back of the torso, up underneath the backpack parts, this does move up and down a little bit as well. Back to the hips, you can get the leg all the way up to the front there, which is just about 90 degrees forward. Get that out to the side, about 90 degrees out like that, or if you prefer like that, getting that straight out to the side, which won't be any problem at all either. Otherwise, you have just some rotation here at the top, and then let's check out our knee bend. Over here, you can bend the knee, and you're not going to have any separation of that knee armor, which is not unheard of for an MG. Some MGs have it, some MGs don't. I think this one could have been a nice point of articulation. Well, the knee armor is like separate, because as you can see, it can move on its own, but it doesn't move with that kind of knee uh, joint. But as for the uh, piping parts here, those work really nice. 
those just clipped off there really easily. They were very easy to clean up, much easier than the Zaku 2.0. I think that's probably everyone, everyone loves this 2.0 Masquerade Zakus, but one thing they don't love is the piping parts. They're just kind of a pain. They take forever. It's just kind of hard to work with them. But I think it's just kind of due to the design of the Zaku 2's piping, unfortunately, but still the Masquerade 2.0 did it very well, despite it being a little bit difficult. This one does work really nice as well. The piping section is short. It doesn't really need to be very long. And the way they're just all connected uh, via just ball joints between each one works well and doesn't cause you any problems. So that, wor that works nicely. Down here in the lower leg, this front part will move forward and back like so. Also the side parts, this side part will move out a little bit. You can see it does kind of move or sideways a little bit like that, not really a whole lot. And then here on the inside, this one also will move that one much more on the inside of the leg. Around here on the back, this little vent, kind of like on the backpack, will move up and down a little bit there as well. Again, not really a whole lot. As for the ankles, you can get those side to side really nice and far, so no problems there. You get the foot up to the front to there and then back down to there, so ankle movement is pretty nice. Although I will say, while most of the kit does feel very solid in its construction, the ankle is one point that does feel a little bit less solid, so it could be a problem, especially because the ankles, as you may know, is a, is a common weak point in a lot of kits. If the ankle is not strong, it makes posing the kit and it's any sort of standing pose very difficult. But as long as you have it up on an action base, it won't be a problem. Uh, so I don't think it's going to be a big issue, but it does feel a little bit weaker than the rest of the kit overall. Uh, up underneath the feet, you have some nice detail there. It's just a solid piece though, so definitely doing a little bit of painting on that could help bring out some of those details. But up under the feet, that detail does look pretty nice. And then for a size comparison, here it is compared with the Master Grade Shin Matsunaga's Zaku 2 High Mobility Type, which is actually going to be my next review, so stay tuned for that. I want to do a review of a 2.0 Zaku and as a comparison so I'll be reviewing that one in full next but here you can see just the differences in them they're kind of similar in height the Zaku 2's head of course being much larger they really downsize the head here for the Zaku Warrior which I think does look good I mean it makes the whole rest of the kit overall look bigger and bulkier where it's not really particularly actually all that big but it, they kind of create that illusion by giving it a really small head and I think overall the design does look good I really like the design proportions of both of them overall in terms of just the per I guess the, the proportions I should say especially but as you can see here it is very different in terms of the proportional styling of them all right so as you can see overall the articulation is pretty solid it's pretty average exactly what you would probably expect and one thing you might have noticed though that is missing from this kit which is going to be our next point as to why this doesn't really particularly feel like a totally new master grade kit is the lack of inner frame gimmicks now the inner frame is all there it's got a full inner frame uh, but it doesn't really have anything in the way of sliding parts of the inner frame or like pistons or anything and like the, the knees or the ankles or the elbows uh, as I mentioned the shoulder the uh, shoulder construction for the frame is very simple overall the the frame in general is just a very very simple inner frame it's just a handful of pieces you could probably assemble this entire kit without using the instructions at all and so again like all of these points that I'm pointing out about this they're not meant to be taken as negative I'm not counting that as points against the kit as long as the kit looks good and it's solid and it works and it does what it needs to do then that's all it that really matters to me in the end uh, whether the kit whether the inner frame itself is very simple or not detailed at all it doesn't really make any difference to me as long as it's not going to show as long as it looks good in the parts that are going to show and it, it does the parts of the frame that show look fine they work well so that's all there and it's pretty solid as well one thing I noticed about the parts when I was just getting ready to put the kit together and I was just cutting out all the parts I was noticing that a lot of the parts felt thicker felt heavier than usual and I was worried about the, that creating weight issues but it actually hasn't really created much in the way of weight issues everything does feel really solid and so I'm not really too concerned about anything on this kit really being weighed down it as I was putting it together I think so while some of the parts may be a little bit thicker, the construction the, of it is so simple. It's just a, a couple of parts like put together, so it's not really uh, giving you too much problems there. And so the, the kit is solid, very solid, and that's good. Before I was mentioning about a couple of the seam lines on the kit, there are of course seam lines on the uh, assault rifle as well as the mega cannon there as well. So seam lines down the middle of those main parts, but seam lines on weapons is unfortunately still pretty common even among master grade kits. So I'm not really going to counting that too much uh, against that, but it does you just be prepared. You do have a lot of seam lines on those weapons as well. So if you take into consideration all the points that I mentioned so far about how this seems similar to an RE100 kit. Uh, I would say the last point to point out is just the overall style of this, the overall 
design of the detail on it. In the unboxing and before, uh, before I even got the kit, I was thinking that it was styled very similarly to the Freedom 2.0, but the construction is very, very different. The Freedom of the, the Freedom 2.0 Master Grade kit is a very detailed kit inside and out. It has a very detailed and very carefully constructed inner frame. This one, like I said, very simple inner frame. So the styling outside is a, a little bit similar in just the way that they've kind of diff made it different from how it looked in the anime. They've made it more stylized and more edgy looking sort of. So I think in that way it's sort of similar to the Freedom 2.0. But otherwise I think the way that this is detailed and the design of the details on the exterior armor and everything looks a lot more in line with some of the things like we've seen from the RE100 kits like the Hamahama or the Yakadoga kits. So. That is the last part that really makes me feel like this was maybe originally designed to be an RE100 kit, but it seems like what they're doing with a lot of the 100 with the RE100 kits lately is they like to pair the releases with a master grade release. So like for example, we had the RE100 Big Nagina come out at the same time as the Master Grade F91 2.0 kit. Similarly, around the same time we had the Master Grade Jagan come out, we had the RE100 Yakadoga, so they kind of like to pair the releases coming out from the same series. So maybe because they didn't have anything planned for a Master Grade kit to be coming out from Seed around the same time, they thought the kit, just designing it as an RE kit, maybe they almost had an entire inner frame laid out anyway that they would need just, just for necessity. Just the way that they were designing the kit as an RE kit, they, it needed almost an entire inner frame anyway, that they thought, why don't we just finish off the whole inner frame for the whole kit and just call it a master grade. And that really seems like what happened with this. So obviously I can't say for sure. I don't have any inside contacts at Bandai to say that with any certainty, but just from my experience, and I've built a lot of kits, as you guys know, it just really feels to me like this wasn't always maybe meant to be a master grade, or at least it was never meant to be a master grade. The that Bandai was really putting in the full effort into it. And actually, one more point that I almost forgot about too. Another point about this is that a lot of the master grades that we've seen over the past couple years have incorporated this really cool detail, where they'll have the little bits of the inner frame showing through the armor. So they'll have little tiny bits of uh, armor cut out where the frame will be showing. You'll see like little gray bits of the frame that'll poke out through the armor. You've seen that especially with like the Alex 2.0, the F91 2.0, and even going back to the Freedom 2.0 once again, that had it as well. Now, granted, those are all Master Grade 2.0 kits, which are usually held to a little bit higher standard uh, than just the regular Master Grade line. So it kind of seems like Bandai's got like their Master Grade 2.0s, which are kind of Master Grade Pro, and then the some of the other master grades like this or like the Jagan are very much more simple and they're kind of like the master grade light. So I don't know. It's kind of very interesting. The master grade line is not quite so easily defined these days, it seems. There's quite a lot of variety among the line. And this one is just being one of the much more simpler ones. So take it or leave it if that's something you like or dislike. I think it's up to you guys to make that call. Personally, I don't mind at all. I think the kit looks great. It does everything you want it to do really well. And that is really all that matters to me at the end of the day. And so I think if you're a fan of this design and you think that it looks good, then I would say by all means go for it, check it out. If you're a fan of the Master Grade line and you like them because of their more intricate construction and you like to be able to sit down with a model and spend a lot more time building it rather than a, like a high grade that you can normally put together in a much shorter amount of time, then you might not like the fact that this one is gonna go together in a matter of a couple hours, pretty much. It doesn't really take any time at all to go to put it together. So if you like to buy the kits uh, for the experience of taking your time building it, this one's not really gonna take you a whole lot of time at all. So again, guys, just in conclusion, don't take any of these things that I'm pointing out about the kit as negative criticism by any means. It's just simply my observations that I wanted to share with you guys so that you can be more informed about what to expect if you do want to get the kit for yourself or not. So I think the kit is great. It's a fantastic kit overall. And I'm looking forward to the inevitable P Bandai variations of it that will come out in the future, the Blaze Zaku Phantom especially. I'm looking forward to that. The Slash Zaku Phantom will also be really cool. And some of you guys were also saying that you're expecting the concert version to come out, which I think would be pretty funny. I don't really expect Bandai to do that. It seems kind of goofy and weird, but hey, goofy and weird could definitely happen. So if that does happen, I think that'll be pretty funny. But I'm satisfied with the kit, and I think if you get it, you will be too. So if you guys do have any other further questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those down below. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day. Bye, guys.